I'm glad everybody came today. I'm glad you guys showed up. I'm happy to see you. I will show you who I am at the end of the class because my camera is set up on a screen, which I am going to turn on right now. And you're going to see some uh, blinking in the background. I don't know how well it's showing up, but it's, it's still fairly light out. Uh, it should be, you will see the blinking on the screen and I've tried to, to, to darken the room as much as possible, but I'm gonna keep it on and we will see it as, uh, as the light starts to dim. So today- uh, What can I use this blue Sharpie marker for? I think we're gonna use, you have a red Sharpie marker because most of the colors today will be red and white and black. Well, I have paints ready. Okay, well, we can use paint, we can use a magic marker. I'm going to use a magic marker, and I will tell you why I'm going to use a magic marker, because we're drawing a volcano. And this screen actually has, although as I said, you can't see it now, mm -hmm. lights that are flashing, and those lights are representing a volcano. And why, what's the big deal with volcanoes? Because Iceland has 130 volcanoes. Iceland is a small country. It's actually an island that's north of us. It's one hour from uh, Dublin, Ireland. It's one hour from Germany. But Iceland is unique because it's called the land of ice and fire. How is it that you have volcanoes in the middle of the snow? It's because Iceland sits on two continents. It sits on North America and it sits on Europe. And Iceland is like two plates. If you have these plates that are not connected and they're like this, this is one continent and this is another continent and this kind of a hole in the middle. And what happens to that hole is that all this gook from inside the earth comes up through the hole and that's what creates volcanoes and volcanoes are very hot. And that happens every three or four years where the gook comes up from the middle of the earth and it creates these spectacular volcanoes that are so hot that sometimes people can't even go near them. Can everybody see it? This is the volcano, boys and girls, which is quite spectacular. And quite scary, too, because it's really, really hot. So you can see that. And when you go to Iceland, they tell people that if they have any breathing problems, or if they are afraid of the heat, if they have trouble tolerating the heat, that they should not go because what happens with volcanoes is that volcanoes send off a lot of uh, debris, ash, and they make the air very, very congested. So if you have a respiratory problem, problem breathing, that it could be not very healthy for you, for you to do that. And these volcanoes uh, will be active for, I don't know how many days until the earth calms down and then cools down and then the volcanoes stop erupting. But after the volcanoes have stopped erupting, sometimes you end up with huge holes in the ground known as craters. And it looks like a moonscape. It looks like a moon landing. We have some pictures later that uh, where we can show you the craters and you can see how rocky Iceland is. Iceland isn't very big, but it has a lot of rocks which are left over from the gook that comes out of the volcano that cools off and gets very solid. And they also form glaciers. Uh, what you're gonna see is that the volcano, because it's very, very hot, the lava, which comes out of the volcano, will melt the snow. <clears throat> and as a result of the snow melting, it gets cold and that forms ice and it forms huge, huge glaciers. Glaciers sometimes as big as your house or larger, as big as apartment buildings. They are incredible to see and also very beautiful because they are sometimes almost bluish white, um, but they are all over Iceland. They are near the water, they are on land, but glaciers are also something that 
are magnificent and maybe in another class, instead of uh, focusing on volcanoes, we could also focus on glaciers. But Iceland is very unique because where else in the world are you gonna see that combination of ice and fire at the same time? It's just, it, it is magnificent. And that's why you have so many underground springs <clears throat> for me in, in Iceland. Yeah, that's an inactive volcano. That's the result when the, when the volcano goes away. And that's what you're left with, that it goes right through the rock. And it forms, there's, there's, of course it rains, the snow melts and then you have water. Uh, it freezes over in the winter time. And the one unique thing about Iceland, remember, is that Iceland, besides being well known for volcanoes, it's the light in Iceland. Iceland is in darkness, total darkness for nine months out of the year. Three months you have daylight and the sun doesn't set the way it sets here. We don't have that cycle, but it's known as, uh, like Alaska, it's known as the land of the midnight sun. So it's very strange to wake up at three o'clock in the morning and you're in total daylight in the summertime. And also equally strange to wake up at like 9 a.m. and be in total darkness for the rest of the day. But that's what makes Iceland unique. What the picture that you're seeing here, this is the heat coming from under the ground. And this is how hot the earth is there in Iceland when the volcano is active. It takes a long time for it to cool down. So that's what happens when you have that kind of, of volcanic activity. Okay, so is everybody ready to draw now? Okay, so you know something? We can start out, I think. Um, let's begin with basically what is the shape of a volcano? Oh, okay. They just joined, so I don't know what we're doing. Okay, we are volcano. growing volcano. And do you see these lights? This is lava. This is the oh. uh, this is the shape, the general shape, the shape of the volcano. Shape like a cone. And that's the ground. And we'll put another mountain back there. That's it. That's really all there is to it. It's just shaped like a cone. And I wish it were darker in the room because you could see the flashing lights, which aren't flashing as much as they, as much as I'd like you guys to see them, but it's starting to pop up a little bit. And that's just to show you how the lava runs. But as the class goes forward, we'll be able to see the lights a lot clearer. So let's start out with the, with the general shape of the volcano. So you have an idea of where to begin. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay, perfect. And again, you can use paint or you can use a magic marker. I'm not using paint only because the lights are on wires. And I don't want to get the wires wet. There's one thing that you don't want to do, you never want to do, is mix electricity with water. That's a no-no. And it's not only, it will not only destroy the electricity, but it could also harm you. So that's a, a that's the rule. Okay, so we have the shape of the mountain. And while we have the mountain, let's do some sky. Because I think the concept is that you only see these things at night, which is not true. You also see volcanoes erupting during the day and they go continuous. So our volcano uh, can be a volcano that's going on at 10 o'clock in the morning. But if you wanna do a nighttime volcano, then that's up to you too. You don't have to do a daytime volcano. So let's just put a little bit of sky up there. We'll put some sky over here. Okay, I'll make sky. Okay, can everybody see, see the sky there? Yes. Okay. Okay, we have our sky. And again, 
if you don't like sky, you don't have to have a sky. You can have, you can even throw in some stars at night. You can make this very dark and you can just put in some stars uh, that will contrast against your blue. I'll show you how to do the stars. Let's see, I'm gonna put, matter of fact, you know something? I'm gonna put in some stars because who says that you can't have stars well, guys, you can't have stars during the day, but our, our, our sky is going to be a little bit different. So for everybody who wants it at night, we'll throw in a, we'll throw in a star. There's a star. How's that? This is a star left over. This is a star that, uh, that didn't go to sleep. The star stayed up all day. Now, for the good part, the good part is, and the exciting part is the lava. The lava comes through like this, and you want to use red for that, because the lava is like a red river. Can everybody see that? Or it flows down like this, and it goes all through the snow, all through the snow. All right, so you definitely, definitely want to make your lava red because that's the color that it is. Yes. Uh, I, uh, so I don't have black, so well, I, mean, I don't have blue, black, and white, so I'm going to make a sunset. Yeah, we have to make sunset with yellow and orange. Because okay, sure, red. because the sky, that, this, that, that's fine because the volcano, flows 24 hours, so it flows through all light. If the volcano flows at night when it's pitch dark, the volcano flows at sunset where you can use yellows. The volcano flows during the day where you can have a blue sky. Or the sky changes, so don't worry about it. If you want to use that, that is absolutely perfect. Now, one other thing about the volcano, which is amazing, that it not only has lava that flows in that direction, but it also has sparks that kind of light up the sky. And the sparks flow like that. They have sparks like this that come up. Yeah, the sparks come up and they go up into the sky. Can you see that guys? Yes. Okay, the sparks come up and the sparks go way, way, way up into the sky. The sparks just don't stay in one spot. The sparks go up. Okay. And we can even, if you want to, we can even put some birds in there. I don't know how close the birds are gonna fly to the volcano, but Iceland has birds and the birds definitely, definitely wanna get out of the way because the birds don't want to get hit with lava. So for the birds, you can paint them or draw them whatever color you would like. Let's throw a bird in there. And let's get the, let's see what direction that bird is, is going. Let's say the bird is, uh, let's have the bird going to the right. And we want to put the bird up away from the flames because we don't want the bird to be hurt. So here's our little bird over here who's, trying to get out of the way. He doesn't have to be perfect. He's just flying and we have his wings there. And we have another bird over here who's trying to get out of the way. And they don't want to fly too close to the, to the fire because it will hurt their wings. So now the other thing that we can do is we can keep our lava flowing. Now the lava, I know I said the lava should be red, but when you look at lava and fire, is it really all red? No, fire is a combination of reds and oranges like that. So your lava doesn't have to be totally red. You can throw some orange in there because when you look at the photos of Iceland, that's the colors. It's not totally, totally red, but we do know that it is a bright, bright color. 
And that's how it comes down. You can have fun with that. You can have fun with that. Change the colors. There. And this, all this over here, this is the snow. Your paper is automatically white, so you don't have to paint that. That is the snow. I mean, you can put white paint on if you want to make it brighter because paper isn't necessarily all white. Paper is beige. But if you want to add white to make it even brighter, you can do that. You know, it's up to you guys. It's up to you if you want to do that. And let's put some, one thing that we haven't done with this, which Kinga has done, is we haven't put in any dirt which is important because the volcano isn't all just lava the volcano is also dirt because when the lava runs down the lava moves the dirt around so let's we can do that with either black or brown pen so let's throw some color in here to show the ground okay because it's the lava basically is moving the ground and it's getting into the dirt and kind of moving the dirt around. And sometimes the dirt gets combined with the lava. Ah, that's perfect, perfect, because there's snow at the bottom. The, the thing we have to remember is that even in the summertime, which the summers in Iceland are not very long, but even in the summertime, you still have snow on the ground. We have some pictures to show you later on. And those pictures were taken in, I believe it was the, the uh, late June, where it's summer here, and it was also summer in Iceland. But in those pictures, you will still see snow in some parts, snow on the ground. And it's very weird because you have people swimming, you have a pool, and there's snow there where they're swimming, which is interesting. It's wild. It's wild. So you want to have the dirt. Yeah, you have an idea of how the lava is, 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 is flowing because this is exactly what you have. It's a light show in Iceland, which is pretty spectacular. Um, it, it, it flashes, it moves, it makes noise, and it's exciting. It's something that's very, very exciting to see and something exciting to, 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 to watch and to learn from. And to learn from. So now, yeah, now the lights are really starting to, now they're starting to flash and starting to pick up so you can kind of see the, the light show, especially here in the middle of the, of the volcano. Can everybody see that now? Yes, we can see. Yeah, good, good. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have any questions or anything that you want to ask about Iceland or about the, uh, about lava, about the climate, about the temperature, about the kids there like you, what it's like. I, I have little thought because yeah. I love your approach with the light underneath. So if you have project, think like Ardina, think out of the box. You can incorporate many strange elements like this little tiny lights, for example, like Ardina did. So uh if we say that we painting well we can do something completely different so uh it's good to follow but it's good to push your own ideas always exactly a painting doesn't have to just be something that is flat a painting can be something that moves you can do uh, uh, I, my lights are tiny lights on wires, but if you don't have that, you can always use a flashlight. It's as simple as just putting a flashlight behind the paper. And you put the flashlight behind But the how paper. do you make it blinking? Well, there's a switch on it. There's that that's the trick. There's a on with my blinking lights, there is a little box where you can make the lights stand sit still or you can make the lights move around. You can change it. Uh, it's a simple little device that you can get um, from Amazon, and it is called, oh, I have to see. Oh, 
And Dina, could you share a secret with us later? How you yes. did it? We would love to know if it's okay. Yes, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to reveal the secret because it's great for school projects and it's something that you can do. It's, it runs on batteries, so you don't have to, your mom and your dad don't have to worry about plugging it in or worried about electricity. And it's a fun project because you can do it for a lot of things, not only for Christmas time, but it's good for projects because these lights are very small, very simple, and you can have a lot of fun with artwork with that. The, the possibilities are unlimited. You just have to use your imagination. There is no right, there is no wrong with a project like this. The only wrong is if you think that you can't do it and you think you cannot use the imagination. You can do it. You just have to visualize it in your mind and hook it up. You can do it and you can make a, a fantastic science project. You can make a fantastic art project. Because don't forget, guys, that um, there's there's not that much of separation between science and art. That science can be art and art can be science. It's just a matter of how you use the two the two things that you can combine them and make some really incredible neat neat stuff. It'll work out very very well. So. You don't have to just be artists. You can be artists, scientists. You just have to think about how the two are related and you make it work. You make it work in your science projects and you make it work in your art projects too. Because sometimes artists have to know a lot about science, not a lot, but artists have to use science to put projects together. And scientists have to use a little bit of art to be able to communicate their ideas. Because imagine how boring it would be if you just have straight science and it doesn't have any beauty, it doesn't have any appeal to people who are looking at it. So you have to be able to get your message out there. You have to be able to get your message across in a very, very creative way so that people will understand your idea and your, your, your concepts. All right, let's put some more lava in there. All righty. And one thing that we haven't talked about, one thing that we haven't uh, considered are people. Because sometimes people come and they stand on the edge of the volcano to look at it because it's so incredible and it's so magnificent. Now, I don't know how brave you wanna be. I don't know that I would do it. Although some people just say, well, you know something? We're gonna take a chance and we're gonna stay in an area where it's not very dangerous. And we're gonna look around, we're gonna see what it's like. So if you wanna put some people in, you wanna put people very, very close to the bottom where they are not in any kind of danger. So we'll put our little people over here who are standing there and they have binoculars because they can't get that close because these things are very, very hot. So you wanna keep your people down here and drawing people is not that difficult. Uh, we learned how to do that in one of Kinga's classes because when you draw people, it's just really a circle, which is the head and then you wanna draw the body, which is basically the letter U upside down. It's not that difficult. And you wanna draw your people over here. You don't have to put legs or arms. You just kind of draw your circle and draw your letter U upside down. And now you have people. Our people are there. Can everybody see that at the bottom? No. Okay, I'm going to tilt the camera a little bit. You can see it. Let me tilt it down. Is it, is it visible now? Not really, but I don't want you to destroy it. So maybe they can look at my screen. So if you if you look, if you cannot, just look at my screen. So little tiny oval. Then you make body shape. 
very simple. If you want, you can add legs. You don't have to. Now, we don't see it, Ardina. It's very, you have this setup and it's very hard to see them. Okay, okay. I, I don't know why, but. Yeah, it's sort of, the, the people are more or less at the, on, on this side. Oh, I see what it is. You know what it is? Because my name is covering them up. Oh, That's we don't, we don't see it. Okay, I'll draw them. I'll, I'll but draw it's them. on my screen, so they can look. Yeah, I'll draw them on this side. I'll draw them on the other side. Okay, I'll draw them. I'll draw them right over here. Then I'll put a few people here. Okay, I'll put a few people here. Okay, so guys, for people, you just as Tinga says, you just draw a circle, and you draw an upside down U, and there's your people. And they are sitting there, standing there, rather looking in in awe. Can you move it into the camera into the left a little bit because yeah. we see the edge of the person okay let me move it that should be easy move it right right here. yes 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 okay. yeah we got that perfect see these are the people here and again if the people are are it was i always thought that drawing people was a big deal and i would get very frustrated when I drew and I wanted to make the arms and the legs and I thought, well, this has to be so perfect. And it, it doesn't have to be so perfect because all it is, is just a circle and the letter U upside down. It's not that difficult. You don't have to draw arms. You don't have to draw legs. You just have to draw two things. The letter O, which is the head, and then the letter U upside down, which is their body. And this way you will have perfect people. If you want to add legs and arms later, you can do that. But as you get better at drawing, then you can draw, you can become more detailed. But for the drawings that you're doing, you wanna keep it as simple as possible. Then you look at your form and then you learn from it from there. Like Tinkers are very, are a lot more detailed and she's working in a different, uh, a different medium than it's easier with the brush yeah it's easier with the brush i think that it's easier to draw people if you're using um paint because the yes the paint flows in a different way i'm working with the magic marker and with the magic marker the paint doesn't flow you put a no. dot on a piece of paper and it kind of just stays there um so when you are doing projects like this you're going to start to learn what you are comfortable with. Some people are comfortable with crayons. Some people are comfortable with paint. Some people are comfortable with magic markers. Use what you are comfortable with. You do not have to use paint. You do not have to use crayon. Use whatever is easier for you to work with and what works for you. That's, that's how you paint. That's how you learn to draw. And that's how you learn science too. Um, you know, there's a certain technique that you use with watercolor, uh, the technique that uh, Tinka is using, and you have to figure out what the correct amount of water is to get the color you want. You have to figure out what the correct amount of water is so that you don't put too much, because if you put too much, then it kind of flows all over. That's air. my common mistake. Ah, what, you know something? But today it's a bit too dry, so it's just, I'm just scrubbing it today. Well, well, well Kinga, maybe Kinga, you can help us out and tell us how exactly to use water when you use watercolor and how to get the uh, correct amount of water. On I tell the you something. I noticed that each of you, because I know you well, each of you has own it did your own individual style so i wouldn't change anything if you want to make a cloud you put a lot of water a lot it's very very watery and then you add a little bit of black oh i'm sorry or blue whatever you want and the and the paint just spreads 
So this is one cloud. And if you want to have a different crowd, cloud, angry crowd, cloud, you just use dry brush and you make it in a different way. So it really, really depends on your feeling, what you want to do. So there is no right or wrong. You have to experiment. That's it. You have to, you, you paint wet on dry or wet on wet. It, it depends what you want to get. So there is, there is no recipe, you know? Art is a little bit like chemistry class. You're mixing yellow and blue and you're getting this amazing green. Then you add more yellow and it's a different green. It's the same thing with like painting that. clouds. I cannot give you the right recipe. You have to figure it out by yourself, but you can do I it. I just use straight green for my paint box. I like to mix and get my own yeah. green. Add a little bit of blue to your green from the paint box and add I a little bit of color. yellow later and you see how it changes. As a matter of fact, I'm trying, I know. To, I'm trying to do an experiment, guys, because I've been working in magic marker and in my cluttered room, I found a bottle of acrylic paint. Oh, and this is a the color is a mustard color and I'm not even going to use a brush. I'm going to take I'm going to put a little bit on my finger and I'm oh. going to wipe it on here. and Let's see what happens. Let's let's see what we get. Oh. How's that? Oh, interesting. You just beautifully blend it. So and I we, like the color. This is a mustard color. So you don't, when you paint, you don't have to use just one, one type of, of, um, of tool. You can, okay. So we'll just try and use that. And as this dries, we kind of get a nice effect, but we might, what we might be able to use instead of the magic marker, we, or we could even use a colored pencil. Because don't forget, besides the magic markers, we have pencils and that will not hurt in the, the pencils themselves. So you can also use, and here I have this guys, you can use colored pencils. You oh, yes. Those. You can use those. I have a bunch of those, which is just falling all over my floor. <laughs> but uh, let's see what happens if we even put those up there. As, as Tinka said, there's a lot of experimenting in painting. So you don't want to lock yourself. But what if so you ruin your art supplies? The art supplies, that's why it's good to have many different art supplies, which really aren't that expensive, you know, a box of crayons isn't that expensive. Um, you know, most of the craft stores sell them. And don't be afraid to mix stuff up. As I said, here I use acrylic. The acrylic is still wet, but on the bottom, what happens when I run my red pencil over there? We're yeah, getting you a get, little get bit of texture. Color. You get texture, exactly. Now, also up here, <coughs> pardon me, up here in the sky, <coughs> We can do the same, the same thing. All those white spots that are in the sky, we can fill those in with the pencil where we use the magic marker and let's see what kind of effect we get. We get a different, <coughs> pardon me, a different tech, a different texture. It's not as dark as the magic marker, but we still are seeing sky. Okay, does anybody have a picture that they want to show? Or is everybody still, still working on their picture? We still work. We're still working. Now on my desk, I have, if I can find it, I have one more tool. If you might, if I can find that tool, I have some uh, some chalk. The chalk 
is good. It's not perfect for everything, but you can use the chalk sometimes. Oh, chalk the would be fantastic. Yes. You can use the chalk. You see what the chalk is doing here? Yeah. This is just, just a small piece of white chalk. Can you see what the chalk is doing? Changing the appearance of the lava. Now, the only problem with the chalk is the chalk will rub off. So you have to use something called a fixative. A hairspray is perfect and it's simple. It's not expensive. And you, when you put the hairspray on, it will keep your chalk from rubbing off because this way, watch, if you put run your finger across, what happens? What happens? Your chalk pretty much disappears. So if you do beautiful drawing, you see that it comes off on your finger. If you do a beautiful drawing in chalk, you want to spray it with hairspray and that will keep the chalk from rubbing off. It will keep the chalk from rubbing off on your clothes. It will keep the chalk from rubbing off on your mom's furniture so she won't get mad and she says, oh boy, I have to clean this now. The chalk is very easy to work with. You can do some fantastic things with chalk. And don't forget that chalk comes in many different colors, not just white chalk, like the chalk that I've used. Chalk comes in blue, it comes in pink. I believe you can get a dark colored chalk. But and purple and green. And purple and green. You see, Victor, you, you, you know. And you could try, if you like, to experiment with chalk, uh, not, only, not only on volcanoes, but for other work that you well, can I show my picture? Yes, please. Please show us your picture. We want to see that. The sky is not finished yet, and I don't know how to make the sky yet. And this is mine. I'm like not... you said before, I did not have any black, so I had to use a color that was near black, so which is brown. That's mine. Right. You're talking, if you don't have black, then you, I'll tell you what. You can use the plain. You can make very dark brown using blue, yellow, and red. Mix these three colors and then you will see what you get. Mm, okay. And you can also just use a plain old pencil. If you have a pencil around, you can, the pencil is, it's a different, it'll give you different lines. It won't be totally black, but if you want to put lines in the areas that you've drawn, you can use that with a regular pencil. Let's see if I have one here and I can show you. This is what you can do. With your pencil if you don't have black paint do that it's not black but it's gray and that will give you a dark area you see it gives you a different effect one thing that you can do with the pencil which is kind of unique you can always take your hand and rub it there and that will give you shading. It comes off on your hand, but that's okay. Because this, is, this will give you dirt. This will give you a variation from the black colors to the gray colors. You see how, you see what that's doing? You see the effect that's making? And you're doing all of this with just a plain pencil. Watch, can everybody see that? Yes, it's a little darker. Okay. but just a common household item. As I said, you know, you don't have to have all the paints and all the crayons and all the best colors. Just use what you have and you can make art with that. It's not a big deal. The big deal is in your imagination. It's what you see in your mind and what you want to draw. That's the big deal. That's the magic. Wow. These are this is this is interesting because these this are is, all... this is live footage. So that's what's going on right now. Yes. It's 10 p.m. there. In Iceland. That's happening. That's happening right now, correct? Right now, yes. Right now. Right now. Oh, that lava looks really pretty. With yellow and that glowing neon. Yeah, that looks amazing. Also, wait, how do they how do they see this? Is this a, someone showing the camera or drone? It's a 
There they are. These are uh, photos that I took when my daughter and I went to Iceland many, many years ago. And she was about the age of most of you guys. And at first she didn't want to go because she didn't know anything about Iceland and she hated the idea. And once she set foot in Iceland and she saw that it was a very modern country and everybody was very friendly, even though it was a little bit cold, she loved it. And she said that she wanted to go back. That, that is uh, a crater that we visited. And we can go to the next slide if you want. That's my daughter there looking in awe at the crater. And she wrote a, a, a report for her class to show the other kids what she saw. And everybody thought that that was pretty exciting. Because again, we all know about Paris, we all know about London, but we know very little about Iceland, which is an island of only 250,000 people. You wanna show the graffiti? Now, like in every country, that is graffiti. Wherever you travel, there will be graffiti. Some graffiti is good, some graffiti is bad, but that is graffiti from a wall in Iceland, you don't see as much of it as you see in New York, but nevertheless, there's graffiti there. And I, I found that to be kind of interesting because I didn't expect to see it there, but that's where the artists decided that they wanted to show some of their art. Whether people like graffiti or not, it's interesting because it's full of color and happy faces uh, on the Right hand side, you see a lovely message, which is kind of typical of Iceland, where it says birds sing in the icy wind. That's rather nice because it does get cold in Iceland in the wintertime. But that's true, the birds still sing and life goes on. You just have to bundle up a little bit. And uh, the Icelanders take it. Now, this is a, I want to call it a hot spring. It's not really a hot spring. It's just one of those outside areas in Iceland where you're going to see the snow on the right hand side on the rocks and you also see snow on the steps. Now keep in mind that this was the this was late in July, our our summertime. And the temperature in Iceland at that time was roughly 65 degrees and you still had snow and that snow was left over from the winter time it gets cold there at night but during the day you have sun you can see my daughter there swimming and this happens pretty much until people can't really swim that much when they go into darkness around september or october i mean they can but i don't know how many people actually go out there and they swim during the dark but there's a lot, that water is warm. <clears throat> this is another example of the green in Iceland because yes, there is grass, there are, is vegetation, not as much as you see in warmer climates, but the, all that steam is coming up from the underground volcanic activity. Because what you see, what we're, what we're looking at today is we're looking at volcanoes that we see above ground. But there are also volcanoes underneath the earth that haven't erupted yet, that haven't popped up. And there's all sorts of things happening beneath that grass, underground water that is very, very, very hot. And every once in a while, it pops up. And what you see is you see a geyser. It's like a big spout of water that pops up through the grass that's warm. And that's like steam that comes up from the earth in a big stream and it's called a geyser or an underground spring that just says i don't want to be underground anymore boom and there it is it pops up uh, do we have are there any more pictures left or is that ah this is another example of how of, this is an example of how the the ground in iceland splits because there's always seismic activity. What is seismic activity? Seismic activity just means 
how the earth moves beneath the land that we don't see it. It's happening right now as we speak in Iceland. The earth splits and eventually it comes up to the point where it splits above ground. We don't see it happening until it does split above ground. And when it does split above ground, you have this kind of result. You see water that in the, in the winter time, that water freezes. Eventually that water may become a glacier because over time it gets colder and colder and colder and it won't have the freeze thaw freeze thaw cycle it will just at some point say okay i'm not going to thaw anymore i'm going to be, be cold and be a piece of ice forever but it's a very slow process and it's fascinating to watch so what you see is you see a glacier that's in formation that may not become solid for thousands of years, but eventually it could become solid for thousands of years unless, unless global warming begins to accelerate. So that's something that we need to we need to think about. This is another and back example. to the pool. That's right, back to the pool. This is another uh, view of the pool that my daughter was swimming in, and you see these all over Iceland. It's not just one. You see these, I would say, every every mile or so. Iceland is the, the the surface of Iceland, again, we had said in the beginning, looks like the moon because it's very, very rocky. And as a result of the rocks, there's hot water underneath those rocks in the ground. And sometimes it forms a small pool, and sometimes it forms a huge lake. But that lake is warm. That water is not cold. That water feels like you're in your bathtub. It's very comfortable. And there are all sorts of minerals in there that are good for your body and very, very healthy. It's not dirty water. It's good, clean water that, that's, that's good for you. And Ardina, talking about the temperature. The temperature. <laughs> we were on a boat there. Iceland is famous for uh, its whaling ships. This was a boat that at that time, the temperature was about, I would say 60 degrees, but when you get on the water, it's much colder. And what's interesting about this photo is the man playing the accordion is a native Icelander. He doesn't have gloves, he doesn't have a hat, he doesn't have a coat, he has a sweater because he's used to the climate, so it doesn't bother him. On the other hand, you look at the lady to the right, She's all bundled up in June with her gloves and her boots and her beautiful, beautiful Nordic sweater, which is made of probably alpaca wool, very warm, and her hat. And she's dressed warmly. And you have my daughter there to the left in her sweatshirt with a couple of shirts underneath, who's sort of cringing because she's cold. But uh, the temperature in Iceland doesn't get to sub-freezing temperatures very, very often. Around, I believe, October, the temperature will drop and it will stay somewhat in the 20s. But just because it's called Iceland doesn't mean that it's super, 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 super cold because it's not really. It's Greenland, which is the sister island to Iceland that gets sub-freezing temperatures, which is ironic because if a country is called Greenland, you would think, well, it's grass and it's trees and it's warm. It's just the opposite. Uh, we laugh because Iceland, apparently, it suffers from its name where people think that it's very cold. And in reality, their winters are not that much different from ours, except that they have um, a, lot more, uh, a lot more snow and a lot more rain. That's the only distinction. They're, it's more... Uh, the, the, the temperature is more humid because they are an island as opposed to what we experience here in New York. We are not an island unless you live in Manhattan. Yeah, you guys did a fantastic job. And what's, what's fascinating are how different each one is. So it just shows your individuality as artists. Excellent work, excellent work. I have to give you, I'm gonna clap because it's really, really, really good. You get, a, you get a lot of applause here. Victor really got the blue sky in there. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's lovely. That is absolutely lovely. I would love to come back because everybody is, uh, this is a lot of fun. You are all good students. You know, we learn from each other and everybody has excellent skills and excellent visions as to how they see their volcanoes. So good work, guys. Good work. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>